Hi, my name is Ethan Fu, and I'm a senior at Gunn High School. And my research paper was a mixed connective tissue disease case study. Um, we chose this disease, um, this case study, because um, we were assigned to choose a patient and study the their um, a medical condition and the um, medications they were taking. Um, and the patient I chose was my mom. Uh, so she is an East Asian female in her 50s. And some of the symptoms that she uh, presented are uh, secondary Raynaud's, uh, GERD, uh, swollen, puffy hands, and muscle weakness. Um, so the disease um, that my mom has is mixed connective tissue disorder, um, which is an autoimmune disorder, disorder um, where multiple uh, connective tissue disorders develop. Um, and there are four main markers, um, the anti-U1 RNP antibody, uh, Raynaud's phenomenon, uh, swollen puffy hands, and uh, impaired lung conditions. Um, there are also a lot of minor conditions noted to be associated with mixed connective tissue disease. Um, through my project, I was able to dive uh, deep into the immune system as well as um, some of the medications they fought. Um, some basic immune system background is that uh, the immune system consists of neutrophils and um, uh, consists of neutrophils, monocytes, and lymphocytes, and a lot more. Um, and basically, lymphocytes are specific white blood cells that actually fight during an immune response. Uh, they come in two flavors: B cells and T cells. Uh, the T cells are responsible for the cell-mediated response, um, and they look. Uh, they go around the bloodstream looking for the antigen presenting cells, uh, which are cells infected by a foreign entity um, that then present an antigen on a major histocompatibility complex or an MHC. Um, cytotoxic T cells recognize these antigens and bind onto them, where they then release granzymes, cytotoxic proteins, M, that result in apoptosis. Um, they also recruit cytokines that inhibit viral uh, replication and increase the expression of um, MHCs and um, recruit macrophages and uh, other helper T cells. Um, um, helper T cells uh, are to help activate the cytotoxic T cells, macrophages, and B cells. Um, B cells are involved in the humoral response and produce antibody specific antibodies specific to the antigen. Um, these antibodies work by binding onto the antigen um, on the pathogen, which induces phagocytosis to destroy the pathogen. Um, so MCTD is an autoimmune disorder, which is where um, our immune system messes up and creates something called autoantibodies uh, that target our, healthies, uh, our body's healthy cells. Um, and the specific one that's a biomarker for um, MCTD is U1, anti-U1 RNP, um, which mistakenly detects um, the normal U1 RNP protein as an antigen. The U1 RNP is, uh, a U1, is called U1 small nuclear ribonucleoprotein, which is a key component in the spliceosome. And the spliceosome is really important for removing introns from pre-RNA, um, before protein uh, translation. Um, and it seems that um, through my research, I found that, um, that the autoimmunity that's directed towards this U1 RNP protein probably occurs because of a common RNA binding domain, uh, B and T cell epitopes, and uh, a unique RNA molecule that U1 RNP has. Um, yeah. And so through some process, um, uh, where our body, where our immune system sort of just messes up, um, the U1 RNP uh, becomes a uh, antigen, uh, which is, pres which is um, uh, presented on the MHC um, developing uh, the antibody U1 RNP. Um, and since U1 RNP and the spliceosome are crucial in every cell and every protein synthesized, it makes a lot of sense that 
when autoantibodies attack you on RNP, that a variety of symptoms are presented. Um, and uh, this particular patient, um, she experiences systemic lupus uh, erythematosus, or SLE, um, gastroesophageal reflux disease, and secondary ray nods. Um, in this, we also um, looked at some of the medications uh, this patient was taking to um, relieve her symptoms. Uh, the first medication is hydroxychloroquine. And the goal of hydroxychloroquine was trying to suppress the over um, expressed immune system response against UI uh, RNP. Um, hydroxychloroquine is usually used as an anti malarial drug, and it's a weak base, um, which changes the um, uh, precise pH um, concentrations in our cells and specifically in our cytoplasmic vesicles. Um, and it's postulated um, that um, the disruption of the pH um, disrupts um, um, mechanisms such as uh, affects the endosomes and lysosomes, which then disrupt um, antigen processing. In antigen processing, uh, a macrophage cell engulfs protein antigens, which are then brought to the lysosomes and vesicles to be processed into antigenic peptides, which are then bound to the MHC class two proteins. Um, the vesicles that um, the vesicles and endosomes that bring the proteins in and out have a very specific um, lower pH levels that help with the uh, complex um, formation of this complex. And by taking uh, hydroxychloroquine, the pH in these vesicles increases um, disrupting the formation of MHC class two proteins. Um, one question, however, is how hydroxychloroquine doesn't affect any um, other regular antigens, but only auto antigens. Um, a proposal to this question is that the auto antigens have a lower affinity with the MHC proteins and rely heavily on the low pH in the vesicles to bind, whereas normal antigens have a higher affinity and the slight changes in pH from uh, hydroxychloroquine are negligible. Um, the second uh, medication that we uh, dove into with was methotrexate. And the goal of methotrexate was to try and reduce the inflammatory response by controlling uh, immune and inflammatory uh, cells from replicating. Um, and this uh, drug is usually used as a cancer drug. Um, to stop uh, tumor growth. Um, so methotrexate is an antagonist of dihydrofolate reductase or DHFR, meaning it competitively binds with DHFR. Um, DHFR is an enzyme that reduces folic acid to tetrahydrofolic acid, which is essential for the synthesis of purine and thymidylate nucleotides. Um, so the, the, the inhibition of DHFR uh, creates an in, insufficient amount of nucle, nu, nucleotide bases, which are used in DNA synthesis, repair, and replication. Um, this results in the cell not being, uh, immune cells not being able to uh, replicate properly, which means less um, autoantibodies are being produced. Um, Another study found that methotrexate also leads up to a build a buildup of adenosine, adenosine, which is a potent immune suppressor, um, which reduces T cell activation and it downregulates B cells and affects overactive immune cells. Um, some common side effects of taking methotrexate include mucocytosis, bone marrow suppression, hair loss, kidney issues, and more. Um, and I believe that this is to be the case because all of, uh, mucocytosis, bone marrow suppression, and hair loss all involve cells that require a lot of cell replication. Um, and therefore, um, this uh, medication that affects cell replication uh, in these areas, you would see the most symptoms. Um, and another common is a, another common. Um, symptom is is in our kidneys um, as our kidneys are our body's filters um, which results in high volumes of methotrexate buildup in our kidneys 
um, and therefore we need to protect uh, these kid our kidneys from having too much uh, methotrexate, which leads me to my next uh, medication that my mom takes, which is leucovorin. Um, so leucovorin is uh, basically an active form of a folic acid, which basically allows nucleotide synthesis to continue to occur in healthy non-targeted cells, uh, while methotrexate continues to prevent cell replication in the target uh, cells. This is known as leucovorin re rescue. And lastly, the fourth medication that my uh, my mom is taking is pantoprazole, pent pentobrazole. And the goal of this was to uh, palliatively um, treat um, my mom's uh, gastroesophageal uh, reflux disease. Um, and pentoprazole is a proton pump inhibitor. Um, um, which essentially um, works by um, reducing, um, which essentially uh, reduces the acidity of um, the stomach acid. Um, and it does this by covalently binding to potassium, transporting ATPase gastric acid pumps. Um, in the gastric parietal cells, the cells that create stomach acid. And this prevents any uh, further proton transfer into the stomach, which reduces the acidity. And this uh, helps reduce symptoms of heartburn and other symptoms caused by highly acidic uh, stomach acid. Um, one thing to note is that this medication works really well because it covalently binds to the transport enzyme, which essentially renders that pump useless until it's replaced by an entirely new pump. Um, yeah. Um, thank you for listening. Um, and yeah, you can see my mom there on the left. Um, um, and to touch on some of the, the questions um, from the guide, um, some of the challenges I faced throughout my research process was that it was um, a very complicated disease with um, some pretty complicated, um, not as researched uh, medications. So I had to um, do a little bit of digging uh, here and there and trying to uh, almost like come up with my own, like I had to bridge together two uh, different research papers um, or multiple research papers, uh, which made it pretty difficult at times to keep track of what I said and when I said it. Um, and I guess the biggest takeaway is to um, persevere and to just try to get stuff down um, and I don't know and I think um, in the future uh, this project has really inspired me to go maybe um, go deeper into um, pharmacology or using bioengineering to maybe come up with a medication to um, help treat my, my mom's disease or any autoimmune disease um, in the future. Um, so yeah, thank you for listening. And that was my um, project. Thank you.